Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our preparatory ground instruction on exercise 13, which is spinning. And this is a continuation of what we learned in stalls. A spin is really an aggravated stall. And we're going to discuss some of the theory and entry and recovery from a spin. This is an important lesson uh, for you to know because, uh, unfortunately, spinning an aircraft into the ground uh, has been the reason for demise of a lot of pilots. They lose control of the aircraft at a low speed, uh, don't fly the aircraft properly, and all of a sudden they find themselves in a spin and spin into the ground. And so the emphasis really is, is on recognition and prevention of a spin. It's uh, important to note too, a spin is an aerobatic maneuver. It's approved for most training airplane, but it is uh, an aerobatic maneuver. To begin with, uh, we'll talk about some theory of uh, spinning. So in a spin, uh, one wing, uh, the down going wing is stalled more than the other wing, the up going wing. And it is caused by yaw that is induced after the wing is stalled. So what that means is that one wing is going to be stalled more uh, than the other. There is a rotation in three axes, pitch, roll, and yaw, which uh, does become pretty apparent in uh, the video. The air is a low speed because it's stalled and a high rate of descent. And the airplane will not spin if st not stalled first. So you remember from our last lesson, we discussed that an aircraft can stall at any attitude. So you're going to be looking at a spin and you're going almost straight towards the ground, uh, maybe 45 degrees, but it looks like it's going straight towards the ground. And the aircraft is completely stalled. So that's just kind of one example when you might be pitched right down. You have a steep nose down attitude, but you are still stalled. There are a number of factors affecting spins. Uh, weight obviously is going to affect the uh, a spin, but more importantly, the center of gravity will affect a spin. And this is really important. It's imperative, like I mentioned earlier, a spin is an aerobatic maneuver. And so it in the pilot operating handbook, it will tell you the conditions for, to spin the aircraft. And usually, let's say you're flying a Cessna 172, the aircraft must be within the utility category and must be in somewhat uh, nose forward center of gravity location. So even though the stall speed uh, may be a bit higher with a forward center of gravity, the recovery will be easier. And this is really important because uh, this actually caused an accident somewhere where I'm from. So there was a pilot, uh, he just got his license and he knew how to spin an airplane. He'd done it with his instructor many times. And he thought, you know what? This is gonna be really fun. I'm gonna go take my friends flying, which is always fun. And I'm gonna spin the airplane, which is not a good idea. So now he went and spun the aircraft with four people on board. He was within his normal weight and balance limits. But because he's doing a spin, he was not in the utility category weight and balance limits. So he entered a spin, and because he was aft center of gravity, the spin ended up going flat. So instead of being nose down 45 degrees or so, it ended up being kind of level with the horizon. And a flat spin is nearly impossible to recover. So unfortunately, uh, those four people ended up ended their lives uh, in some field somewhere because this poor pilot could not recover from the flat spin that he got himself into. So an aft center of gravity can make stall recovery difficult. And this isn't a 172, which is a pretty benign and docile airplane. So it's imperative that you remain within center of gravity uh, limits for a spin. Flaps will also uh, affect a spin. They will reduce the effectiveness of the rudder. And so if you have flaps down during a spin, make sure that you uh, raise the flaps right away. The other thing that you will often find in aircraft is how the aircraft is rigged. So if you think about the angle of incidence in the wing, so how much that uh, wing, each wing is pitched up or down, and we think that one wing may be uh, stalled more than the other in a spin. If you have an airplane, especially an airplane that, let's say, has been involved in an accident in years prior, but been fixed, and that wing is only, let's say, half or quarter degree out, so almost nothing, like imperceptible, very small amount. Well, it will still stall first and it will tend to drop a wing. And so you'll notice that uh, in some training airplanes, uh, you'll notice it, it has a wing drop. And especially let's say you have flaps. So flaps are really difficult to rig accurately to within half a degree on either side. And so often you'll have a wing drop if you do a stall 
uh, with flaps down. So you just have to be uh, really aware of that. There are three stages to the spin. The first stage is the incipient spin. This is where the wing has just dropped past 90 degrees. The fully developed spin is auto rotation. You could let go of the controls and the aircraft will continue uh, to spin. And then last uh, stage of the spin is the recovery. This plane stopped spinning. The wing is now producing lift. And uh, you might still be heading straight towards the ground, but at least you're not stalled anymore. And at this point, the, the airspeed is rapidly increasing and you have to recover from the dive. The procedure to enter a spin, we're going to start again with a hazel check. And here's something that's really important with a hazel check is security, is making sure that your cargo is secure. Really take a look behind you. Make sure that everything is tied down or is underneath the cargo net. Uh, because this is an aerobatic maneuver, you may induce negative G that you have something heavy, let's say it's survival equipment or so, or your fire extinguisher is not uh, secure. And all of a sudden it comes up and flies, hits you in the back of the head. Well, it's going to be a bad day for you. So to enter a spin, your hazel check, you're going to reduce power to idle, maintain level flight. So you're going to continue to the, pull the controls back. Don't let the plane descend. And then at stall, you're going to apply full rudder and full back elevator. And again, like we mentioned in the stall uh, lesson, you might have to be a bit aggressive, let's say at 50 or 55 knots, all of a sudden just full rudder, full back elevator suddenly, uh, and, and just be a bit aggressive. But again, that's something you'll go over with your instructor. It all depends on the type of aircraft that you fly. Then what you'll notice, the wing will drop and you will enter a spin. To recover, and this has to be memory, power is idle, full opposite rudder, neutralize the elevator and recover from the dive. And so I'll just touch on this recovering from the dive. It's very possible that in a spin, you actually end up inverted at some point. And so this recovery from a dive, you will end up picking up a lot of speed. And so uh, you don't want to overstress the airplane. It, now, if you have a choice of either exceeding the G limits of the aircraft or exceeding the speed limits, you're probably better off exceeding the speed limits a little bit. Uh, but if you do this properly, you shouldn't be exceeding both or either of them. But but you do need to recover from a dive, and it will be quite a dive that you're in. If you have flaps down inadvertently, you have to make sure that you have you get the flaps up right away too. So let's watch this video: the entry and recovery of a spin. So let's take a say to enter a spin. Pull the power to idle, as if you were doing a power off stall. Attempt to maintain altitude. When you hear the stall warning, abruptly pull the control column fully aft and push left or right rudder to enter the spin. To recover from a spin, apply full opposite rudder and release the back pressure on the controls. Ease out of the dive and return to cruise flight. Here's an external view of a spin. You will notice the aircraft is oscillating in all three axes, roll, pitch, and yaw. The spin is actually quite a bit more aggressive than what you see here because of the way Microsoft Flight Sim's camera system works, trying to keep the aircraft all in the same axis. This is a demonstration of an incipient spin. An incipient spin is just the initial part of a spin. You enter a spin, and as soon as the spin is entered, you abruptly recover. Safety moment here. Let's talk about our center of gravity limits. Here is an excerpt from the pilot operating handbook for a Cessna 172. So here, let's take a look. It says we have, no notice we have a normal category and a utility category, right? And then it has your your range of things. And then uh, let's take a look. Oh, here we go, maneuver spins. So you wanna do these spins and you should be in the utility category if you wanna do a chandelle, lazy eight, steep turn or spin. You have to be in the utility category. So notice here too, utility category 4.4G that plane can handle. So here we just zoomed in right here. Here's an important caveat. This airplane is not designed for purely aerobatic flight. However, the acquisition of various certificates, such as commercial pilot, instrument pilot, and flight instructor, certain maneuvers are required by the FAA. That's in the States. 
All these maneuvers are permitted in this airplane when operated in the utility category. Here, the utility category, the baggage compartment and rear seat must not be occupied. Okay, so there's your big condition for your Cessna 172. Nobody in the back, nothing in the baggage compartment. Okay, now you're allowed having your regulated things such as survival equipment, first aid kit, things like that, but you're not allowed having anything extra. And then again, no aerobatic maneuvers are approved except those listed below. So you can do a spin. It's considered an aerobatic maneuver, but you're allowed doing it. Okay. There's some other stuff down here. Aerobatics uh, that impose high loads should not be attempted. So there we go. Let's review in a spin one wing, the downgoing wing, is stalled more than the other wing. It's a yaw. There's yaw induced after the wing stall, and there's rotation in all three axes. To enter, do a hazel check, reduce power to idle, attempt to maintain level flight by pulling back on the elevator, apply full rudder and full back elevator when the stall horn sounds. To recover, power idle, full opposite rudder, neutralize elevator, and recover from the dive. That concludes this preparatory ground instruction on spin. I hope you have a fun time uh, doing it with your instructor. It is uh, pretty much as aggressive, and uh, if you're somebody who's somewhat squeamish, it is reasonably scary. But you just need an introduction to it. You, it's not part of your private pilot license flight test. Uh, you have to be shown it. You have to recover from it. And But the emphasis really is on preventing the spin. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you on our next lesson on spirals.